Hey guys, it's Chris. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to do a mini book tag. And it's because it's already July and I realized I haven't discussed anything relating to like the overall type of books or goals I've met this year or anything like that. So I like this would be a great time to get into it. I just wanted to mention I got this tag from Love Lauren. Um, I will leave her information down below and she's really great. I really recommend it. She has really great taste in romance because we both had mixed feelings about Wild Love as well as she has really great variety when it comes to manga and manhua and kind of the discussions she brings about when reviewing her books. So yeah, check her out. Besides that, Let's get started. So the first question is best books I've read so far this year and I had three and I had three for very different reasons and the first one I would recommend and say is probably like one of my top reads this year is Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This is a story that follows Mia as she has immigrated from China to the United States, specifically Southern California where I am located and her experiences as an immigrant child making best of a situation while dealing with a lot of I would say discrimination racism and kind of the struggles of doing your best and meeting expectations not only from one culture but as well as the culture you're trying to like assimilate into and not feeling enough regardless of everything that you do the uh, next book I would say is one of my top reads is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is literary fiction. It is beautifully written, a beautiful discussion about internalized racism, internalized colorism, externalized colorism, and the effects of decisions and family trauma and how that carries through through different walks of generations and how they are living their lives. And yeah, this is very like, I would say this and family, I don't have family lore, my sister is borrowing it, but I would say this and family lore are like very similar in that they recognize and explore trauma, generational trauma, the decisions of one generation and how that affects um, younger generations. But I feel like Vanishing Half goes more into the aspects of colorism, internalized colorism, and how like your life really is shaped, regardless if you want to or not, by the color of your skin and how others and you perceive yourself, right? So I think this is a beautiful story I would recommend. The audiobook is beautifully narrated as well. And my last top read is <laughs> The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. And I totally recognize, like, this is not a book for everyone. Like, I think if you are a fan of Lee Bardugo's previous works, this is very different. This follows, you know, a disenfranchised young woman trying to find a place for herself in a world that is hell-bent on trying to basically exterminate her and label her as a heretic when she has a long history of, you know, not fitting into this idealized world where it's basically top religious men telling women like what they can and can't be and her basically striving for the power to make her own path in life. And this is a great story. I love it. Like, come on guys. The next question is best sequel I've read so far. And technically, Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros is the only sequel I read because, okay, you know how like manga and anime, like manga comes, <laughs> okay, so like you know how manga is multiple books. Do you qualify those as sequels, right? And like, I read like obviously the Chestnut Spring series, but there weren't like exact sequels to each other. It's not like we're following Red and Summer at different points in their lives as them as the main focus. So would you qualify that as sequels? Like stuff like that. Because technically the true direct sequel I've read this year so far is Iron Flame. So that's like <laughs> the only answer I could give. But like, is it the best? I'm not gonna like confirm nor deny. I'm like, like the first 50 pages of this book I wanted to DNF because I could not stand how Violet did not understand like why Zayden wouldn't trust her with like 
Okay, anyway, okay, I don't want to spoil it. Anyway, but yeah. Not by choice, but only because I have, this is my only option. Our next question is new releases I want to read and, ooh, okay. I narrowed it down to one and that is Titled Creatures by Sheehan McGuire. I always mess up their first name. I'm so sorry. Sheehan McGuire. This is, I think, the third book to the Impossible or Impos Impossible City trilogy. Okay. I'm really looking forward to reading this, but I'm also very hesitant because I loved Metal Game. I think Metal Game was one of my favorite books to read last year, and I entertained it a lot. And I really enjoyed myself. I really loved all the aspects and the lore and the story and like the twisty turniness of it. But Seasonal Fears was not <laughs> um, it for me. And I don't, I'm a little worried about title creatures. So I'm like, so I'm like holding off on wanting to read it, but I really want to read it. But I'm also scared that I'm going to be very disappointed in the same way that I was disappointed about Seasonal Fears. Oh, one of the most anticipated releases that are coming out late this year is Heavenly Tyrant. I'm so excited about Heavenly Tyrant. If you guys have read Iron Widow, you guys know like, oh, like how good the series or like how good the book is and how I'm um, like, ugh. you guys should check it out. It is young adult technically, I think. I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be exciting. I also am looking forward to uh, Wind, and Wind and Truth, I believe, by Brandon Sanderson. This is the next book in the Stormlight Archive. I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm also looking forward to Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune. And that is the sequel to House by the Cerulean Sea. And I really love that book, but I'm a little nervous because I think we follow Arthur and his story and go into his background and I'm like, I'm just worried. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of flack for this next question, but... <clears throat> My biggest disappointments in 2024 so far have been Oh, Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare and Hook by Emily McIntyre. I did a vlog <laughs> on Hook, reading vlog on Hook, so I think I've been very vocal about how I do not like the main male lead in this story and I want him to die. And he is a rocking, walking red flag and I'm all about walking red flags. Like, like I think I've been very like open about how like my taste in manga and uh, fictional male characters. I'm okay with like red flags, but you gotta give me something to root for. And like the main characters, like love interest James was not someone I could root for, and he was so insufferable. And like, <sighs> and this is nothing against like the author's writing. The author's writing was pretty good. It was just a character in himself that I was like, in a romance, in a dark romance, I don't want my characters to break up. Like, you know, I want to root for them and like, okay, but yeah. If I keep talking about this book, I'm just gonna keep going on a tangent. <laughs> the book, as I mentioned, is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. I feel like, I don't know if I've just grown out of Cassandra Clare's writing and that it no longer piques my interest in the same way that the Lost Hours and the Clockwork or Infernal Devices series did, you know? I think, man, I was like, oh, this is gonna be very interesting because this is her first adult fantasy release outside of the Shadow Hunter series, you know? And I think it would be really good to see like, you know, her kind of age of her writing. This sounds terrible, but like I just could care less about the characters. And there is, they felt very flat to me. I felt very drawn out. And like, I just did not enjoy myself, which is such a bummer. 
because I love the concept, you know? I love the ideas behind this story. And it's Cassandra Kara, so I know I used, at least I used to like her writing, right? But like, it was just really disappointing. I wanted more, I did not get more. And then George R. R. Martin on the cover said, everything I look for in a fantasy. And now I'm taking that personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 the biggest surprise i've had this year reading wise are two romance books if you have gotten to know me you would know like i'm not really i was never really into romance until i started flawless right like i dabbled into it a little bit i mean there's manga that i like romance in I like romance mangas and minghua and fan fiction i'm not gonna lie like i like stuff like that but there's something about reading romance in a novel that was not hitting and i think it was just because i was looking in the wrong places and not really looking and considering my type of taste right so <laughs> y'all i cannot tell you the insane unhinged like obsession i've had with reckless and butcher and blackbird these are like my biggest surprises i was not expecting to love these so much like oh like i will fight for winter i will fight for winter and theo like if people like you if you hate her fight me guys fight me at me even though I don't use social media really, but at me guys. I just did not expect to love a couple so much and like be so invested in their development as people, as a couple, as parents, their struggles and like, oh my God. I just like i'll think about scenes from reckless and it just makes me all giddy and that was like the biggest surprise for me because like i usually don't do that right like oh, so this was one of the biggest surprises and then y'all butcher and blackbird the unhinged obsession i have with this book like i went into this book being like oh this is just a serial world like serial killer romance like whatever like i don't have any expectations i don't want to like put that on a book that's not fair right but like i did not expect to feel so seen about Sloan's story and ruin's story and their banter and like the oh. i did a vlog about this too and like i just love them as a couple and i love this story and i was not expecting to love this and feel so seen and recognized and kind of be so invested <laughs> and like god like if you guys have not picked up butcher and blackbird i definitely recommend because this is like this is like tied for me with reckless as one of my top romances this year i believe Ooh, but I have, I'm gonna start Leather and Lark, so I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Ooh! The next question is... I don't know why I'm sitting like this, I'm sorry. <laughs> the next question is new fictional crush. And if we exclude manga and anime and stuff like that, Ming Hua, Dan Mei, oh, probably no one because... <laughs> Look, I can swoon. I can recognize I can swoon over Theo. I can swoon over Justin from Just From the Summer and Rowan and a lot of like these characters and these stories, but I don't know if like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know if like, because Okay, here's the thing, because I want them to end up with the fe like the female lead, so like it doesn't even reckon like it doesn't even like mentally click in my brain like oh this this is like a key, like you know like <laughs> you know I don't know it doesn't even I just don't mentally click that in my brain I just want them to end up with like the other character so like that's not even like a possibility or anything like that but also like I have a very difficult time like connecting with people on a romantic level so it's like it's it's a no-go for me like i don't it's not even a thought <laughs> so 
shout out to my husband who waited like two years for me to kind of recognize his feelings for me. That's the type of person I am. The next question is books that made me cry. And <laughs> I'm a crybaby. I'm I'm a straight up crybaby when it comes to books. So like take your pick y'all. <laughs> Take your pick of what book I've read so far this year. I probably have cried at some point. <laughs> but I would say... Oh, I would say Front Desk and Furian, Furin Beyond Journey's End have made me cry in a way that was like... Kind of embarrassing. I am in the process of rereading Furin, so I am going to count this. Um, and it's just like... The emotional bonds and like Himmel scenes, I don't know, every time Himmel pops up, I just start weeping for some reason because we, because we get everything from flashbacks and it's like such a bitter, like I'm already starting to cry, like <laughs> I'm already starting to like tear up because like it's such a bittersweet feeling because you don't get to know him but you do get to know him and you just like <laughs> starting to cry. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm gonna skip that. <laughs> and then with the front desk, right, I really cried because I really felt the way Mia has felt at different points in my life. And it's so like, just the feeling of hopelessness you feel at times because you're like, I'm doing my best, we're trying our hardest, but it never feels good enough. And it's like, that feeling of a kid as someone who grew up with immigrants, right? Like, like what you're doing is never good enough. And you want people to recognize that and you want to feel like you belong, but you don't always feel like you belong in either culture that you're existing in. And it's such a like suffocating feeling sometimes. And like, there's parts of that where Mia's going through that, right? And I recognize that in myself, in my own stories and in my experiences. And it's just like making me start to a ball, but... <laughs> Oof, all the windows are closed, my fan is off, I am sweating. Please do not look at my mustache. <laughs> I think... So... The next question on this tag is books that made you happy this year and this is not a new release but it is a book I have recently read on my Kindle and this is part of the Kindle Unlimited book so if you have that it is something you could read for free even though technically you're paying you know but anyway and that book is Magical Midlife Madness by K.F. Breen I believe yes Breen and is it is it necessarily a magical, mystical, fantastical work of fiction that is similar to Tolkien? No. But is it a fun ride? Hell yeah. <laughs> it's just fun. It's just fun. You have a character who is in her early 40s, late 30s, I believe, who has just gotten divorced. Her kid is off to college and has been like, deuces, mom. And you're just like, it's just fun because she's like, no shit's given. She is in a, that part of her life where she is so comfortable with herself. She is able to accept herself for who she is, see what needs to be worked on, but still love herself. And I really love that. And she just does not like, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> she's like, oh yeah, you're an alpha. Like you're the uncrowned alpha king, but do I look like I care? <laughs> It's such a good time. It's such a good time. Like all the characters are really fun, really enjoyable. And like nothing feels like so high stakes where it's like, yeah, there's high stakes, but it never feels like, oh my God, this is world ending. <laughs> but so like, I really enjoy it. I really like that she does not put up with anything. And it's just like the banter between her and another character, like the kind of look love interest kind of thing is really fun and like they're just a good time i'm not reading this to be like oh this is exploring the aspects of human nature of good versus evil the long tail of what will come through in the end at the end days this is not it <laughs> this is about a girl who got divorced and is aratuing to a, the boonies to go into a magical house and be like y'all i'm here <laughs> 
So like the most beautiful book, like I've also have bought books this year that have sprayed edges, kind of like the special inserts and all of that, right? And I was thinking about selecting one of those, but I decided not necessarily the most beautiful looking book, but it is The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab is one of the more beautiful books I selected for this tag and not beautiful in the aspect that I love the cover. I think the cover is kind of um, ugly, but <laughs> this is a very beautiful memory for me because I got to meet and have my book signed by the author and really got to get some insight about her view on the characters, her view and insights about writing and the beauty of writing and framework and her method. And I thought that was very interesting. And it really showed a lot of new light on the characters in her previous uh, trilogy for me and how she really works and kind of puts things together and how aspects of herself are in these characters. And I really love that. And it was just a beautiful memory. So I thought I would select this one. Yeesh. Look at that pile of books. Yikes. So this section wasn't part of the original tag, but I just want to go over kind of my review of my book goals and everything like that. So I think overall I have been reading a lot more variety compared to my previous years. I am very bad at tracking <laughs> about what I've read. Even though like there's Storygraph and Goodreads, I don't really use it. So I know I have read over 50 books so far and I should do more and put in more effort to track my book reading, my statistics and stuff like that, especially since I'm so interested in seeing like the kind of kind of changes in my reading and how I'm reading and all of that, the genres, the kind of different times I'm reading at, if it's all at the end of the month or if I'm spacing everything out like those are things I'm very interested in, but I'm not putting in the steps to do that. So I want to make a more conscious effort to put in the work for that. And I don't know, I just notoriously, like for me, like why am I so bad at it? Like, I don't know. I don't know, because I think it's like, I don't know if like I should count certain books because it's a main qual, it doesn't have a technical physical book, but like, if I'm reading a manhua, right? Like say I'm reading Lore of Olympus and I know they have books out. I do count those because they have a physical book out. But like how many chapters is that? How many webtoons is that? So how much does that quantify in my reading page wise and number wise and like words read per page and all of that. So it's like things like that where I'm just like, I don't know, like should this count? Should this not count? I ended up do counting some of it, but not all of it. So like my reading statistics are very inaccurate. So that is something I would like to remedy going forward. And like, I am hoping I'm reading more of a diverse selection, but obviously because I can't quantify this number, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm just going based on vibes. <laughs> Other than that, I think I am reading, I'm basically on track to read 100 plus books this year, right? And I think personally, this is not something I strive to. I don't really strive for hitting number goals when it comes to reading. For me, it is enjoyment and quality of the books. Am I enjoying the quality of the book? Am I enjoying reading? Am I engaging with the book and taking things in because like so for full disclosure every year I set a goal of reading one book one book that I am going to enjoy that is my goal that has always been my goal is always one book that I enjoy and if I hit that <laughs> perfect if I go the year not reading anything <laughs> that's okay as well and I think putting the pressure of reading or hitting a number for a certain year really takes the reading and enjoyment out of reading for me. It is nothing, if you do that, that's nothing against you. Like what works for you works for you, but it doesn't work for me. At some point 
this starts to become a numbers game for me and that's about engaging with these stories viewing different perspectives and seeing different walks of life and absorbing and challenging my own views and also seeing and living through these different characters and their struggles and their highs and lows right so that's why i always do a one book a year my goal going forward outside of keeping track of my book consumption and my reading goals and stuff like that is to kind of slow down on my reading and go at a pace that i'm comfortable at and i'm enjoying the stories i'm not feeling any type of way about having to read the most recent review like reviewed books or like the new tiktok book because like you know that's just not who i am i do a lot of rereading of the books that i already own like i like rereading books because i like going through it at different parts of my life and seeing how my perspectives have changed how what i viewed as something really stupid i recognize now is like maybe a trauma response like these are things that i like to do when i reread books and i don't always feel like that's something i should share because i feel like oh is it just boring but like at the end of the day that's not how i am that's not who i am and i think you know that is still a valid way to read and like <laughs> full disclosure i have over a thousand books right over a thousand books and that's not counting my digital books that i own and it's like i don't need new i don't necessarily need new books right because i have books i haven't read there's books i like to reread soon and stuff like that but i don't know i'm going on a tangent i don't know if this is even helpful for anyone i don't know is this helpful let me know let me know what your guys' thoughts maybe i won't post this if you do see it then I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Go ahead. You guys can yell at me in the comments. I promise it's okay. You can yell at me. I know this is like <clears throat> not necessarily a popular opinion, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you guys have read any of the books, have any same opinions on the books I've shared today. And if you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm not going to be mad. I don't know. Okay. Bye.